This week's episode, we are fishing the 10,000 Islands with Captain Justin Napier, and I'm excited. He's a fresh face down in that zone, and he has been on the snook and juvenile tarpon. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, CA. Looks like we're gonna have a little weather, at least for the start, and then the second half of the day doesn't look like it's gonna be too bad. Let's go, let's go make a few of them famous today, huh? Let's roll. <laughs> wow, look at that. We just get out here, you bring a camera and it's raining already. We'll get around it. This is one of my favorite fisheries. I haven't been down here in a couple of years to shoot flats class, but it's one of my favorite fisheries anytime I'm down in Southwest Florida or headed to the glades. I do like stopping here because you guys have, I mean, so many potential options in a day of fishing. You got tarpon, you got snook, you got redfish. You even have, you know, goliath grouper that are tucked up underneath yep. the mangroves and some of these ledges out here. We got plenty of trout too. Trout too. What are we doing today though? Today we're gonna go for some snooks. I'm gonna sight fish some snooks and then we're gonna go for some tarpon, mm -hmm. aka jungle puppies around here. AKA jungle puppies. Jungle puppies. That's uh what my buddy call them. I would like to I would like to jump a few jungle puppies today. Well, I know we got a long idle, so we may as well just settle in and bug spray up. Bug spray up, I'm gonna water go, up. I'm going to dig that out of here while well, you're driving the boat, because I can already feel them. Sounds like a plan. Justin, it would appear that we will battle this light rain in and out ahead of this front all day, or a good portion of it. It might get better later. I mean, it looks like it's breaking up over Florida Bay yeah. and the Keys. Yeah, we'll have some patches so if, here. If, if they'll get the wider patches where we can, can just have a little bit of light. As long as we can see in between it, we're good. The rain usually helps them get fired up a little bit. But, this kind of snotty weather is always good for snook. Seems like snook love this kind of weather. Keeps us camouflaged too a little bit. If it's, you know. They don't feel the boat. Yeah, if it's low tide and the sun's beaming. It's, yeah, and it's the water's this clear. The water's this clear. It's just a death sentence. It's way harder. I'm okay with this, this is good. I can still see ladyfish are chewing. Yeah, We're lady good. fish are going nuts. <laughs> oh, snook. Get them. I'm busy. Two of them. One Boom! Down. Got them. <laughs> you see that eat? Yeah. That was killer. I'm looking to see if the just, second the second one's crawling I let them right. By like three foot and just twitch twitch. Second one's right there. Ooh, that's a healthy one. That's a healthy one, boys. Oh, that second one wouldn't take it. That's a healthy one, boys. Crab trap. You're all right. We'll just drift on by. Go get them up here. I'm going to grab them. You want to net them? I think I'll just grab them. All right, you're going to grab them? Yeah. Don't crab trap me. Oh, that's a really good snook. It's a really good snook. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. You got them in the right spot, though. Yeah, you got them in the right spot, Justin. My hooks work. Yeah, you got them in the right spot. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Beautiful backcountry snook. Gorgeous. I'll take um, that all day. Gorgeous colors. You know, sooner said that the rain fires them up. Fires them up and enhances the bite. And we see two cruising down the bank. Yep. Lead them by a little bit. One nice twitch. Boom. Hammer time. She's a beauty. Beautiful fish. See you, Good girl. job. Thanks for playing. Good job. Thanks, sir. Woo. She was happy. She cooperated. Yep. So 
For one thing, CA and I were both concerned about was the weather. We weren't given ideal conditions. We had lots of rain in the forecast and lots of wind. I knew if we could get tucked away in some of these spots, we could get on some fish. I can tell you this, camera equipment does not like moisture. And uh, I'm not saying my guys were trying to throw the cameras in the water or anything like that. They didn't have to. It rained and it rained and it rained and it rained. And thank goodness we had the Hells Bay Eldora because about the only way to escape the rain was to get inside these mangrove tunnels and fish for these small juvenile tarpon and small snook that they just they penetrate way back into these hidden back bays that you can't even get to but some of these creeks that go into the to the overhangs it was like a mangrove migraine if you will that's what i would call it a mangrove migraine all right let me see if i can do it with this short rod oh, we're playing with fire here guys i can tell you that <laughs> this is going to be a little eight pound rod here this is going to be either going to be really good or really bad one's rolling in the corner up there should be coming towards us Good hit. That's a snook. Get him up. Get him up. Get him up. Oh, it's a bigger one. That's not good. No, that's not good. Oh. Tangled up here. There you go. <laughs> Tangled up here. You might have to reach out. Oh, Jungle for the fishing. save. Jungle fishing. For the save. Here, I'm going to open the bale. I don't want you to get sprung. I'm just tangled up in all these trees. Got him. <laughs> Teamwork. He's right in the bottom here. Who fishes like this? People that want to go on adventures. Yeah, this is this is adventure, all right. Got him. <laughs> now, how do I get all this stuff through the trees? I was trying to get them over those branches. I think you're just on the edge here. Hold on a second. Stand by. One of the, I guess, redeeming qualities, if you will, of fishing down there in that area around Naples and Marco and places down below all the way down to Chuck is the fact that anyone can do it. And it's pretty simple. I mean, it doesn't get any more primitive fishing than that, especially if you're in a small boat where you can pull yourself hand over hand back into these creeks and you can watch these fish laying in there on the edges. Now, casting to them? That's a whole nother thing. That's a challenge. I can see why a lot of the avid guides and anglers back in the day that used to fish and ply those waters loved to fish those little five foot pistol grip rods because you have to. Having a long spinning rod in there is just a liability. I mean, a lot of times we weren't able to even skip. We had a bow and arrow cast to get the lure back in there. It didn't have to go very far, but it had to get in there so we could catch a few. Snook? Yeah. Snooks are taking over. Snook! I knew we had a nice falling tide, and I knew if we could just get to some of these backcountry creeks, the snook would kind of be tucked up in there as well because we've had some cooler water temps. So between the snook and the tarpon on the inside and outside, I had a good feeling we'd, we'd do really well tucked in the back. You know, I, I really don't think, Justin, that it's about the color is, is, is that side to side action because yeah, we've got them on redfish toe, we got them on dark and stormy, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get them here on get her done. I think you're right. So I think you're right. Skip a few more times. And yep. Maybe we maybe we make a transition. Really. Yeah. Thinking it looks maybe. like the sun is bleeding through now. Yeah. Sun's popping out. Water's dropping yeah. out. So maybe, maybe a few more casts and we'll get some sight fishing opportunities out here in yeah. the bay. I'm just saying that because my knees are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Roll, he tried to hit it there. Tarpon? Snook. 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 <laughs> Get over. over the tree. Chaos. <laughs> well, they like to get her done too. Yep. 
think we caught them on about everything, but it looks like, Justin, they're all the same size. Yeah, about the same size, little cookie cutters. Yeah. Fun back here, though. Oh, this is, this is so much like bass fishing. Yeah. Reminds me of some of the places I've gone High bass structure. fishing in the, in the past. You know who would enjoy this is someone like Flip Pallet. would love to do something like this again. Yeah, he would love this back here. Oh, yeah. The harder it is to get to, the more he embraces. That's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way in that sense. Even in a small boat, a small skiff like Justin and I were using the Hell's Bay Eldora, you still, you can't pull in there and there's not enough room lots of times to troll a motor very much in there. I mean, you can use it for parts of the adventure, but there are many areas where you're pushing limbs up or you're grabbing prop roots and you're pulling yourself along. It's kind of like being a kid again. It's a lot of Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer type feel to it. Uh, spiders <laughs> spider nests everywhere you, you kind of half expect to come out of of the other side with like a grasshopper in your hat and a frog in your pocket shoot snook nice nicer snook nicely that's done. a little guy he looked big for a second. It scared the crap out of me. I, was like, I no. think he got on the other side of that. Yeah, one. he got bigger on the other side of those that, trees. The, those little limbs there, they roll up underneath them. It's a decent fish. Yeah, not a bad fish, though, for a creek fish. Our gator coming to us? No, he doesn't no. care. He doesn't care what we're doing. He's just like, hey, guys, I'm just getting He's just some chilling. Over here. Pretty fish. Yeah. They're so dark in here and bronzy. First time I found one of these creeks was amazing. I'll never forget a couple of the spots I found similar to today, you know, just really windy and just getting annoyed with all the wind and casting and wind knots and then just randomly going up in a tight creek just to escape the wind really. And I pulled into one of these spots and just, it didn't matter what I threw, fly, paddle tail, jerk baits, they were hitting everything I threw. And when I find spots like that, I just, I cherish them. Oh, you got it there. It's a bigger one. Oh, it's a good one. Another good one. You want to get that one, CA? Another good one. Oh, okay, Oss. Another good one. She green. Oh, that's a good fish for the creeks. For a, yeah. for a creek snook, for, he's awesome. For a creek snook, I'll take that all day. That's a good fish. Great creek snook. <laughs> Absolute chaos. <laughs> I might grab my phone and let you let you hold you this. This is a great picture for for the gram. That's awesome. I got her. Got her. Got her. That's a good one to get out of the creek. With all the sun bleeding through, we should get out there in the bay and try to catch something big. Yeah, I'll see if they're moving out to the bay right now. Good plan, CA. Yes. So eventually, in the back half of the day, we ended up getting a couple of two and a half hours where we could pull down unimpeded by rainfall and we could fish the zones that would have tarpon in them. And we went down in this one long creek uh, that kind of just 
almost dead ends and goes into a bunch of capillary creeks. And down one of those edges where he's like, they're always in here laying in here. You're going to find one. And I was just probing around with a mirrodine. I just, I could see him waking out of the bushes because I threw it up tight to the prop roots and he came waking out of the bushes there. And I knew mayhem was about to happen. Hey, there he is. Oh! Jam! Hammer time, boys! Oh! He smoked it! Oh, come on, Bubba! Turn the troll motor off. Whew. That's my favorite right there. Oh, boy. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he crushed it. When That's he first hit it, I too. thought, if this is a snook, it's going to be one of my best. That's a good fish. Just watch that troll motor because I got it on uh, We get this one. Anchor mode. We can call it. <laughs> That's a stout one. It's a good, a good size fish, too. I got him on the hooks, though. He wants to. Keep he wants his head to. up. Come on, come on. Oh. Dang it, puppy fingers. All right, I got him. Got him? Got him. I'll grab that hook. Yep. <laughs> Took a mirror lure to do it. Took a mirror lure, Lil Wayne, coming through. Coming Took a mirror in, lure to do it. Coming in clutch, Lil Wayne. <laughs> Look at that beauty. Justin, what an amazing day of fishing. Yes, Unbelievable. Sir. Between the, the little micro creeks that you had us in, catching snook, and, and even these back bays where we've been busting these tarpon, this is just one of those unbelievable... It's a memory that I'm not going to forget. It is a great fishery. Uh, 10,000 islands. As far as I'm concerned, this will not be my last trip. I hope so. It was a blast fishing with you. Absolute blast. Well, Great fish right here. Look what, at this. What a beautiful fish. I might, I might get my phone out and take a quick That's pick of you there. Too. Oh. If he'll let you. Nope, he ain't letting me. He ain't letting you. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> awesome job, man. Wow. Give me a handshake. Uh, yes, sir. That one sends us back to the marina right there. Damn. Good That's the one fish. we were looking for. Hammer not time. a micro poon, but a no, legitimate that was, poon. That was a, and on bass gear. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the Tackle Talk today is all about being a minimalist. And that's exactly what you have to be when you're fishing out of a small little boat like the Hell's Bay Eldora. To say the least, I wanted to have some versatility. So I brought the Terramar Double X. This is the seven foot medium action rod. I paired that up with a Stratic 3000. It's packed with 10 pound. Uh, Power Pro Super Slick V2 line. And with the spinning rods that I brought on the show, I only rigged them with 30 pound fluorocarbon. I'd put about 36 inches. And I came down here and you'll see that I'm using a 3 aught 1 12th of an ounce chin lock uh, hook system. And the bait we're using is uh, one of my personal uh, custom colors from Z-Man, and that is the Dark and Stormy. Now, we use the Gitter Dunn color as well, but the Dark and Stormy was just one of those colors that does a really good job, especially on those snook. When I wasn't bow and arrow casting or skipping up underneath the trees, I was using a setup with a hard bait here, and this is the setup that I, I like to use the most. And that's the Terramar. This is the seven foot medium, and I use the six foot nine medium. The six foot nine has a little, um, I'm gonna say faster action than the seven foot rod. The seven foot rod's a little bit different. I've got it paired up with a Cronar. This is the 150 HG Shimano Cronar. And uh, at the business end of this, I put some inline hooks on a, on a standard MR17. This is another custom color of, of mine. This is the little Wayne color. And uh, those inline hooks, very critical to success. You'll also notice when we're fishing this bait and casting close up into the prop roots, these inline hooks allow me 
to make those real tight skip casts in the little pockets uh, and gave me some good opportunities to encounter some of those backcountry tarpon. This setup here, I'm using a little bit heavier leader material. I'm using 40 pound leader material. And I typically on those setups, like this casting setup, I only have about two foot of leader just because I just want more freedom with my casts. So that's basically the setup that we used for success with our trip <laughs> in what I call the mangrove migraine trip with Justin Napier. I'll tell you what, I was very impressed uh, with Captain Justin Napier. Um, that was the first time we'd actually got to meet in person. We'd only talked on the phone, but you could feel in the phone conversations the passion that he has. And I follow him on Instagram and I see his catches and I see that he's out there every day um, fighting the good fight in the bushes, a bushwhacker, if you will. So getting to meet him in person and, and see how passionate he is and his work ethic is great. And he works hard for not only me because this is a television program, but he's gonna work hard for all his clients. Him and I share a client who's a very good angler and he, and when Jimmy said he was impressed with Justin, I knew right then that was a good enough recommendation that I wanted to spend some time uh, with Captain Napier and, and you won't regret it. And he loves the small boat stuff and he's not afraid to get it dirty.